nerds, and welcome to the LARP House for more of our LARPtober festivities. As some of you may have noticed, we did not put out an episode last week. Do not worry, everything is fine, we are cool, and we are definitely making up for it this week. We have taken three terrible, awful department store costumes and completely turbocharged them for as little money as humanly possible. But first, some updates. If you like watching us pimp things out, then you are gonna love the new Patreon reward. If just half of our subscribers pledge $2 a month on Patreon, we would be able to travel the country and do what we do in this video to these costumes to your entire LARP. Once we reach our goal, we will pick at random from everyone who has pledged $2 or more, and we will come to your game and bring you props, costumes, and makeup all for free. So if you want it to be more likely that your game will be selected, get more people from your game to sign up. Please, just let us help you, please. There are also other cool benefits to pledging in the meantime until we reach that goal, like LARP House giveaways, where we will give away props and costumes, like what you're seeing here and like what we saw on the Etsy store, which you can also go to and check out to support us if pledging is too much of a commitment for you. Also, don't forget, December 1st is the deadline for your in-character interview submissions for our Meet the Characters Global Edition video. Guidelines and interview questions can be found in the description of this video or at a post pinned to the top of our Facebook page. And now, without further ado, I give you LARP House Halloween hats. Alright, so we're starting off with three just god-awful Halloween costumes here. We've got Tinkerbell, we've got a devil, and we've got a horror robe. Not even sure what that's trying to be. So we're starting off with Tinkerbell, and we just look at those horribly sad wings. Just, it's, it's upsetting to look at. Honestly, so we're gonna start by fixing those saggy, saggy wings. What we're gonna do is I've got floral wire here that you could just get at Michael's, um, and I'm cutting, you know, a length of it, twisting it all together to make kind of a stronger wire, and hot gluing the ends because you don't leave pokey ends of wire. That's ratchet. So, just hot gluing it to the felt. good thing about cheap felt like that is it's usually made of plastic so it bonds really well to hot glue. And um, you end up making this kind of like U-shaped hook. Yeah, and that hooks into a bra or corset top. So if you weren't planning on wearing a bra or a corset, huh, you are now. <laughs> and just a uh, Make doubly sure that no pokey bits happen in your back. That's, uh, it's bad news. It's terrible. So now, what I am doing is just putting down a layer of white glue, and I am getting ready to add some what is called confetti glitter that you can buy at Michael's. I ended up using almost an entire packet on these wings, and it's just, it's iridescent, it's beautiful, but it's fluffy, so you gotta put another layer of white glue down on top of it after it dries to kind of pat it down a bit. And next, I got this tub of clear glue and just a a booty load, a crap load of glitter um, that I just bought at Walmart. A big old tub of the most disgustingly rude, obnoxious glitter you can find. Just start to spoon it in, lose my patience, dump the whole thing in. And then I just uh, kind of cut the end off and, and pipe it onto the wings like icing. And I'm kind of following the original design of the veins and the wings because those were not bad. They just uh, were kind of wimpy, so yeah. And now we're gonna sparkle a, a crap ton of leaves to put on this costume. Just white glue along the edges, dump it in the glitter. Lather, rinse, and repeat about 800 million times. Do a couple flowers, because that's pretty. It's all, it's all good. It's all fun. And, um, you may remember those sad little, like, fairy loofah flowers. We're gonna, we're gonna replace those with, with these. <laughs> these are flowers that I just had, uh, lying around. So, yeah, I'm just... Just gonna start hot gluing fake leaves to this costume. And then I decided that 
the leaves weren't going to be enough, you would still see some gaps in it and just that horrible color. So I'm literally just taking watered down acrylic paint and painting right on top of the fabric. It is watered down quite a bit because it's acrylic paint will just like turn it to plastic real fast. So just adding some details or bringing up some highlights. Just kind of blending it all over. Rolled up the the little like tool parts of it because those I actually wanted to keep. I'm just kind of going back in and blending. Blending some more. Just kind of creating an organic meaning basically like barely organized hot mess of different colors. That's what happens here. Cut off that god awful trim and the horrible tiny fairy loofa flowers. And after that, it's a pretty standard procedure. You just, you know, use your artistic judgment, glue on the leaves where you uh, where you see fit, and just do that forever. And then, you know. You got Tinkerbell! <laughs> Next we have this horrible little devil costume. <laughs> so, the first thing, right away, we're gonna need some horns. And I'm not talking about teeny little, like, cute, like, mm, I'm a cute devil horn. No, we're talking about big, don't mess with me horns. So, the base of these are just gonna be solo cups. And I am literally just melting holes into these things with the hot glue gun tip. Using that same floral wire from before. Figure out how long you want your horns to be. Uh, like triple that length and, and, and fold it so you have like a relatively sturdy but bendable wire. Poke it through the hole. Poke it through the hole. Tie it off at the end. And poke it through the hole at the top of the cup. And you have like the entire base, first first half of your horn there, just basically for free. <laughs> no, not a lot of work involved. And then we're just gonna build up the rest of the the body of the horns with with this tin foil. Not a whole lot of method to it, just you know, don't mess it up. <laughs> I tried hot gluing the cup to keep it sturdy. You definitely want to hot glue the tip. And you know, I just touch hot glue with my bare hands because I hate myself. But um, I ended up fastening the horns on either side, in addition to through the center, um, with more of the floral wire to keep them from rotating, which they were doing. And then we're gonna paper mache to kind of contain everything. And, and smooth it out a bit. Just using junk mail and white glue. And, uh, you know, crisscrossing patterns to help make it stronger. Blah, 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 stay on better. And just, uh, do that until it starts to look like not tin foil and a solo cup. And then, what I'm doing for the cool texture, because by the way, this is going to be a Bifrost Demon, um, I wanted that cool, like, crinkly icy texture, so, yeah, and once it dries, we're just gonna lay some color on it, it's gonna be great, and then I use my finger to blend a lighter color on top, just because the, the brush was too full of paint and it would have just made a solid color. I like to use my fingers. But once the brush was ready, I just dry brushed it, and then got the lighter color and, and kind of started to concentrate some highlights, because you know how ice does that, it's like bluer in deeper parts and whiter in surface parts, and then just adding some more of that beautiful confetti glitter from Michaels, because it's just, it's wonderful. And so here, wah, wah, terrible row, we're going to cut off those dinky little piglet devil horns right away. It's the first thing I'm gonna do to it. Like, I can't. Ugh. 
Then I'm just taking more of that watered down acrylic paint, put it through a spray bottle, and just spray the crip crap out of it. It's gonna be great. Um, you know, just kind of following, not like a frost pattern, but keeping in mind that I want it to be a little lighter around the edges, because that's kind of, that's how frost works. So I'm sticking to the bottom and creating like gigantic snowflake pattern so it's almost unrecognizable as a snowflake but we'll we'll get there don't worry it's gonna be great so yeah just look up reference for how ice crystals form on things and and this is all gonna dry like way darker than this so this is a it's gonna end up being like a slightly like just there there you go slightly bleached effect then just going over that with a much lighter color with a little bit of blue tint with some slightly finer detail with with ice crystal pattern continuing and we're just gonna get smaller and more detail as we go in towards the edges yeah just beautiful it's it's a whole lot of just you look at a picture for, for five minutes and and just repeat forever. And I've just gotten a, a much thicker, whiter paint, painting the teeny tiny details on top of the little blue details. And it's kind of like painting trees. It's kind of like painting feathers. It's kind of like painting the most tedious thing of your life. And now, we're on to the belt. This is just an old belt that I already had, and I'm mixing a little bit of liquid latex into this paint. Um, and I'm just watering it down a bunch and kind of sponging it on. I want this to be my ice belt for my Bifrost Demon. And, uh, we're just kind of layering the paint, kind of like we did on the horns. And eventually, after we got this, like, nice speckled glittery ice whiteness effect. This is just beautiful. I'm gonna add a uh, glitter to it and then assemble. <gasps> Got this crazy ice demon. And now the horror robe. We're gonna we're gonna turn this into something. This didn't even come with a mask or gloves. So <laughs> I got a mask, and it's a terrible mask. It was a $7 mask, and I am, you know, I'm going to save it. So I've just covered the whole thing in white glue. You can also do this in liquid latex, but I was just seeing how white glue would turn out. Um, but you'd probably want to use liquid latex. Uh, and I'm just layering tissue paper and toilet paper and paper towels, depending on the textures I want, to kind of recreate, recreate like, rotting flesh that's kind of still clinging to a skull to make this into more of a rotting corpse than a skeleton. And I couldn't find gloves that I liked, and I'm just lazy as crap, so I have just taped some cling wrap to a tracing of my hands, put some latex down, and I'm just creating my own bony, peely, decay hands with just little tubes of rolled up paper towel and liquid latex just layering it on and creating bits where bones pop out and stuff. It's just it's great. You need to know a little bit of anatomy for this. Just, you know, quick Google search on your smartphone, you're set. So one hand is all tendony and the other hand is all bony. It's going to be amazing. Then I'm covering the whole thing in this dark, like, bloody, kind of gross brown paint because I'm preparing to basically do the same technique I did on the horns and that is a light wash. You're just going to build up from a really dark color and I've, you know, started bringing out the bone color where it is present in these things. Starting with the hands there and then going to the skull. Building up the highlights as I go. Adding more like yellows and, and stuff. And then, um, starting to color in the flesh. She's using a really dark, um, kind of gross, meaty flesh tone, bringing out some highlights with a, a light wash, kind of, what they call 
And then I'm adding some green because we're making this like a grody necromancer dead dude. And uh, you know, why not? We want to go for a little bit of a zombie feel. Adding some kind of greenish yellow highlights to the bones here. It's always, always fun. And then going back in with some like really just bloody red to give it some nice like juiciness mm -hmm. nasty juicy rotting green meat that's that's what we all want to see on Halloween <laughs> and just kind of making those tendons notably different color than the bones so hopefully that translates and just going back in basically noodling at this point adding more green highlights and just really trying to differentiate between the the flesh and the bones and so this is a uh, this is what we had kind of before and this is the robe and I'm doing that doing that thing that I like doing with the watered down acrylic paint and basically just zombie vomiting all over this robe and we absolutely wonderful it's like you see this color it's like does it does it glow in the dark does it does it give you cancer does it like who knows um, and I'm just distressing all the perfect edges on this robe because Jesus, like, <laughs> ain't ain't no monster gonna have perfect cut edges on its clothing. Uh, uh, not not gonna happen. Not not in my house. So I'm just distressing it with a, a rasp and scissors and just really messing up those edges. We're adding some dirt color, more acrylic paint. And then here, here we go. Once the prosthetics are applied and, and the mask is applied, we added just some like ratty cloth that I had lying around and he's, he's beautiful. My wonderful necromancer son. So, that's it for this week, nerds. Thank you for watching. We love you, we cherish you, and if you have any questions, comments, emotional outbursts, please feel free to message us. We are on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, and Instagram. Remember, nerds, like us, subscribe to us, fight with us. <laughs>